Hello everybody, it's Jama here with another scrapbook layout for you. And I have quite a few photos here in lots of different sizes. These are family photos from a trip we took to California. That's my sweet sister and me. Um, imagine us without our hair, like we look pretty much identical, right? When we were growing up, people always thought we were twins, but she's two and a half years younger than me. That's her daughter and my son and her son and my daughter, you probably recognize my kids. That's her husband. This is my auntie. I'm gonna talk about these photos because this was actually a really special little celebration that we went to and this is a lot of extended family. So I have a sketch that I'm going to use and I'll bring that in in a moment. I'm just gonna kind of lay my photos out and I wanted to walk you through, um, you know, kind of my thought process and why I chose this sketch. So here's the sketch, and this is from the Creative Design Team Sketchbook Volume 1 of the 12 by 12 sketches. And so what I do when I choose a sketch is I go through my phone where all my photos are, and I look at you know my options, the ones that I have to choose from. I don't select all of the photos. I choose my favorites from an event that I have. Um, and then I look at sketches and I think like, okay, this one can accommodate the different orientations that I have. So I knew this one had to be landscape. This one had to be landscape. These ones did too. I knew I wanted these ones to be big because it's like the whole family. And then these ones could be smaller. This one had to be portrait orientation because of the way we're stacked. And then a lot of these could uh, be uh, cut to squares. So I landed on this one because it perfectly fit the photos that I had. So then I was able to go in and since I print at home on my Epson PN400, which by the way, I absolutely love. I know I talk about it a lot, but I get a lot of questions on it too. And I have a video all about how to use it. And I will link that down below and how to, to uh, print photos at smaller sizes and everything. Love, love, love that machine. If it broke today, I would buy another one right away. That's how much I love it. So um, anyways, I'm then able to go in and print my pictures at the sizes that I need. So um, that's what I did here and this is how I'm going to have them configured. So let's talk about the paper options. So my first thought was to bring in this beautiful shy shamrock color. This is one of the in, the new in colors because look at how perfect it matches my niece's dress. And I thought that that would just go really, really well. So these are from the in colors little six by six paper packs. And this is the glimmer paper in the in color pack. But then I was like, well, I wanna bring in other colors too. So what else do I have that I can bring in this color? The only other paper I have is this paper from the Unbounded Beauty paper pack, and that could definitely work. It's got some of this Shy Shamrock color in here, but it really didn't have a lot, and I didn't love this color mixed with this. And this is from the Memories and More card pack that's got a little bit there too. But the rest of the Unbounded Beauty collection, while I love that collection, none of the other papers had this Shy Shamrock color. So I was like, well, I could work with this, but I really wanted to have some more paper options. So then I pulled out another paper pack. This is the Frames and Flowers collection, and it's easy to overlook in the catalog because it's in the very beginning of the catalog, and that's not part of it. It's in the very beginning of the catalog, and it's kind of like in its own little section. It's not with the rest of the paper. But what's cool is this comes with three sheets of paper, and they're all double-sided, and they all coordinate. Um, so you've got the three sheets of paper. This is actually from a different collection. And then you get a whole bunch of die cuts with this as well. So the idea with this paper was to create like little gift packaging, things like that. There's all these little pop outs and these will actually pop out and create frames. How cool would that be for a shaker card? But what I was really drawn to was all of these little die cut pieces. So we have little embellishments that match the paper that we can use on our layout. So I definitely will bring in some of these embellishments and I might bring in some stamps as well. But I thought, you know what? This isn't the exact colors of my pictures, but look at how well it goes. We've got a lot of oranges and greens in my dress here. Mine's like the brightest one of all of them. 
And then my sister's dress is more of like a desert rose color. Like if you're familiar with Close to My Heart's Desert Rose, we've got a lot of blues. But then my daughter and my son are also both wearing kind of peachy orange colors. We have the dress from my niece as well that even though it's not an exact match, I think, think that this is going to work really nicely. And so if we bring in all of these, like here we've got even a brighter kind of coral color that matches these dresses and the flowers in mine a little better too. So I think that this is what I'm gonna go with, even though it's not an exact perfect match. This one even goes with Trisha's dress pretty well. So this is going to work really well. Plus I've been dying to play with this collection because it's just so, so pretty. In fact, this is the collection that I sent to my team as their challenge this month. Um, I sent them this little envelope. It was kind of like a surprise envelope with pieces cut and little die cut pieces from the pack and from coordinating cardstock. And their challenge this month is to create something using these pieces that I sent. And everybody got something just a little bit different because there are so many different pieces in this pack. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna play around with this. And even though they don't have the whole pack, maybe um, it'll give them some other ideas that they can use. Although I do plan to play around or play along with that challenge as well and create something just from that extra envelope I have. I actually do have one extra envelope. If anyone is, else is interested in joining my team, I have one ready to send out for the June challenge. All right, so I thought that I would mix in this paper collection too. It's got some really pretty um, gold foiling. I think this one's called Nature Sweetness. I don't have the name. I'll link everything down below if you're interested in anything I'm using um, so that you have that handy. But I just thought that this would look really pretty. Um, any of these, this one has more gold. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna want more white with a pop of gold or more gold with a pop of white, but I thought it would be really fun to bring in some of the specialty paper. There's this one too, but I don't think this one goes with my photos as well. I think these two were the ones that I kind of had in mind to go with these photos, but this is a really gorgeous pack. This one could go as well, but that's a lot of gold too. I think I'll stick with um, one of these. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and then decide on which paper's gonna go where. I've brought in several of my close to my heart cardstock colors to try to match for my background. And I'm trying to figure out, I've already matted it in black around the white and my sketch calls for two mats, a skinny mat and then a wider mat. This could work, but it's going to bring out more of the blues and this dark green and I think I want to draw out some of the brighter colors. This is a retired, long retired peacock color from close to my heart. Now this is smoothie. This one's not a full 12 by 12, but we'll get the idea. The smoothie matches quite nicely with these orangier tones that we have. But again, it draws your eyes straight to these warmer tones and I, that's not really what I'm wanting to draw out. I wasn't sure what I wanted to draw out when I started. I just know that I'm not loving this. So I'm gonna set this aside. I might use that in another way. And what I'm thinking I'm gonna like is a green because we've got a little bit of green in our dresses and then she shows up in most of these photos and we've got green in most of these photos. I guess we've got the rosier, orangier colors in most of the photos too, but the green grass, and I'm just liking that better. So this is Jade. I don't like the dark. I'm not That could work, but I'm not quite sure about that. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna lean toward this. This is Green Apple, which retired a while ago. But I like how it's a brighter green. It matches the grass really well. It matches the green in my dress and it blends well enough with my niece's dress. And then more importantly, I've already cut the papers I'm gonna use. So let's see how it works with that. Cause we have, this is Granny Apple Green in Stampin' Up World, which is a little bit different than the green apple from Close to My Heart, but it is a brighter green. And I think that that is going to blend quite nicely. In fact, I have a little bit of the Granny Apple Green here on my desk from those kits that I was cutting for my team. So it's pretty close. It's a little bit brighter 
um, but I think that it'll work. I don't have a full 12 by 12 in the Granny Apple Green because I've been using it quite a bit. I, and I got some 8.5 by 11, which obviously won't work. We also have Limeade, that's this lighter color on the top. And I think that's a little bit too yellowy. It blends in with the gold too much. It's not working for me. And then this is a really old color. This is Willow and that's going to be way too bright. I don't like that. So I think I am going to go with the green apple and we have the light side too. I think that's too light. I think I am liking this and um, I think I'm going to go with that. So I like the black. I did already mat my photos in black as well. So um, I knew that I wanted to have the black. Typically, if you know me, I like to mat my photos in white. A lot of times that helps your photos to pop more. But since in all of these photos really, I have a really light background, I liked the black. And then I this calls to have a second mat. So I was actually thinking that that's where I would bring in this smoothie color. So I cut a mat for that, and I really do like that. Actually, let me bring in the green apple so I can see what it looks like with the background. All right, so here is our green apple so we can see that. I like that contrast. I like the smoothie with the green apple. I'm liking it with this. So I'm wondering though if this doesn't call for a second mat, but I'm just kind of feeling like it needs it. So we're going to have all of these patterns over here. I think I like that. I like having the two mats. By the way, this sketch is one that I created for the sketchbook and I based it off of a layout that I did, a Christmas layout that I did last year. So if you hang till the end, I will show you that design so you can see where it originated from and another idea for this sketch. So I did already cut all my pieces and decided where I wanted all of these. So if we look at the sketch again, here is that sketch. So we've got the long one here, and then I had the gold right here. I figured all this out off camera just because it was kind of taking me a while to decide. So I did all of that figuring out off camera. Sketches save a ton of time, but I still somehow find a way to take forever in my paper choices and <laughs> deciding what's going to go where. So a lot of times I do talk through that in my videos and kind of give you my thought process on why I went with which paper and I am still doing that a bit, you know, with the outline and stuff, but I'll, I'll just kind of talk you through this a little bit. I didn't, all the patterns, the florally patterns in this pack were quite similar. I didn't want them all to be too close to each other. So I used this gold one to kind of break that up and break these up. And then this is the back of one of those papers. So see how those florally patterns are all beautiful and I had a hard time deciding which ones to use, but I really wanted just a little bit more of that pop of the bright kind of peachy orangey color. So I did that and then I cut these. These are from the Spotlight on Nature dies. I was thinking I wanted to have a circular element instead of a tag, um, but then when I put it on there, I didn't love it. I actually went back to the tag idea and decided that I like that better. I don't know, I just like the shape of it. And then I have a couple of ribbon choices to put. I'm just gonna kind of go like this and I think probably staple it. So I have this option. This came in one of my paper pumpkin, or no, it came in the new um, card kit, I think, that came available. And then I also have this one. This is beautiful. There's like a um, gold thread in there, but I think it's going to bring out too much of this aqua color. And we, you know, it, it kind of is competing with this green here. So I think I'm just going to go with the white for this, but I'm liking that. And then over here we have kind of the same idea. So we've got the tag and then I've chosen my papers. So this, this is the only one that's kind of directional. I guess you could put it upside down or sideways and it would be okay, but it, I think it looks a little bit better like that. So we've got that one there and then this little piece and all of these little pieces, even the tiny little pieces 
um, the dimensions are given in the sketchbook for you. And then we'll put this one here and the tag comes in and that kind of covers the bottom of these layers so you don't see them. So one thing you can do, especially with this paper, and I think I did it in my original layout, is you can actually cut it like this so you don't waste that little bit that's gonna be hidden behind the photo. So I'll probably do that. But the sketchbook gives the full dimension just you know to keep it a little bit easier for cutting. But just know that you can do that and save the paper for this too. So um, there's that. And then we'll save this for journaling. So I gutted my green paper and as I was looking at everything here, I just felt like I needed a little bit of that smoothie color around the edge. So I tried it with a very skinny border. I thought, well, I've got the green as the main focal around the edge. And then I cut just a very skinny border. So it's skinnier than this green apple. And I like that because it draws this color out to the edges a little bit more and I'll go ahead and gut this paper too. I should have done that before I cut my mats <laughs> and then I could have cut my mats out of what I gutted but that's okay I'll use it for something else I always save what I cut out of the center and if you have some forethought <laughs> like I didn't for this but if you do gut this then you can use those pieces to cut these mats as well. So you could have done that with the black. You can take what you got out of the black and cut your mats. You probably will be a little bit short um, because there are a lot of mats here, um, but you could also you know, cut again another mat within this. Andrea recently showed about doing that in one of her videos. So you could cut a mat out of the center of this for the four by six, and then cut a photo out of the center of this and this for the three by fours, and then you'll still have enough if you've got all of your black papers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this glued down, and then we'll get to the embellishing. Before I started embellishing, I popped everything out and put it in this little tray. And I also added some gold shimmer brush splatters in that kind of blank space in the bottom where my journaling's gonna go up in the top left and then also under where the little embellishment cluster is on the far right. It's really hard to see here and I'm gonna try to show you later on, but it is just really hard to capture on camera. But I did a similar treatment, well not similar treatment, but I did a, a stenciling treatment in my original layout, which you'll see here in just a little bit. Um, but I wanted to kind of mimic that because I wanted a little something in the background, but I didn't want to do stenciling. I thought it might be a little too much with this paper that was a bit brighter and busier. I'm just trying to make sure I have all of the same colors and have some wispy sprigs in each cluster. I really love working with like little wispy sprigs. That's really my style in embellishing. And I love that this collection has a lot of these little leaves and sprigs and then even some littler flowers. I wish I had some more medium sized flowers, but that's okay, I made it work. Um, but I do love that there are all of these little die cut pieces in this paper pack because most of Stampin' Up's paper packs are just paper packs. We don't have stickers yet like Close to My Heart had. So although there are some really lovely die and stamp options, it's nice to not have to do any stamping sometimes and just have it come together a little bit faster. As I start putting my little gem embellishments on, these are the iridescent foil gems and they are one of my favorites ever. They go with everything, but something just was not sitting right with me. I liked the direction, but something about the colors or the border just was not sitting right with me. So after I get these gems on, I'm going to step away for a few hours and just think about it. So here I've come back and what I realized bothered me is that bright green border. Even though there is that bright green in the paper, it's not a very prominent color and it does match my photos, but with the paper, I just felt like it was off. So I'm going to take my trusty spatula, my Cricut spatula. This is great for kind of you know, doing this, detaching paper from paper. And I got a lot of clumps on it. You just clean that off and then it will 
um, be good enough to work on the next page and you saw me hold up a different color this is the juniper it's a very old close to my heart color but I really like that it's still a green tone but it matches the color like that eucalyptus -y, um, pattern that's in the paper quite a bit better so I'm going to go ahead I gutted that out and since I didn't show gutting the paper earlier I thought I would show it here and then I'll line it up on my Versamat and make sure I've got my quarter inch all the way around and then we will get that on the page and that is so much better don't you think I cut my title with my Cricut. The font is called Milkshake. I probably got it from defont.com, although last time I looked for it, I couldn't find it. So maybe I got it somewhere else, but it is called Milkshake and I put it up on some thin 3D foam. And then I thought, you know what? I need a few more little embellishments up here coming out of the title. So I'm going to add a few more little embellishments. And while I do that, I thought I'd talk a little bit more about these photos. So these photos were taken at a celebration of life, hence the title. This is, was my uncle's celebration of life. Um, he passed away. He and my aunt lived in Colorado, but they grew up in Long Beach, as did my mom, my aunt's sister. And so they had the celebration of life in Long Beach, and we happened to already be in California on vacation. So this was actually the very last day of our vacation. We came here straight from Disney. How about that? Um, but it was a really lovely day, exactly how he would have wanted it. And it was so wonderful to get together with all of this extended family that I hadn't seen in a long time. Um, my aunt is my mom's half sister and their dad, the only dad my mom ever knew, um, but was basically her adopted dad or stepdad, if you will, was Filipino. And so this is a lot of the Filipino side of our family and, Oh my goodness, I miss my auntie's cooking. Filipino food is the best if you've never had it. Wow. So that was my auntie on the far right. Um, my grandpa's wife, my grandpa passed away years ago, but I hadn't seen her in so long, so it was wonderful to see her. Anyways, here is the original layout that I based the sketch off of. As you can see, it's very similar. Instead of a photo in the bottom left, I have a little certificate. It is exactly four by six though, and we have all of the same photo sizes. I just used, you know, different paper, different embellishments, and I did the stenciling. If you haven't seen that video, I've got it on the screen right here. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more scrapbooking videos, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.